today is the day we get to start backfilling out here. It's like, I don't know, 35 degrees, feels like 90, you know, or something like that. There's just a little heat wave here in Billings, 40 degrees. So we are going to get the snow out of uh, most of the foundation here, uh, kind of dig it out with a shovel, and then we'll find our non-frozen material, put it in there, uh, roll it over with the compactor, uh, both on the mini and also the walk behind. Um, and we'll get this thing all back filled up. We got the waterproofing done um, on most of it. It's a pretty easy process. We just got five gallon buckets of the waterproofing material. It's like a tar. Just paint it on with a big roller um, so everything's waterproof and ready to rock and roll. All right, so here's a better shot of that waterproofing. Obviously, it just goes on and it's just painted on uh, and just prevents any water from getting like through the wall into the interior of the house. All right, so if you ever want to act like you know what you're doing around a dirt guy uh, when they're back filling and stuff like that, all you got to do is come over here and, and test the dirt for optimum compaction. So grab a piece of dirt, squeeze it in your hand like that. Now see how it made itself a ball? Well, if you bounce this up and down and it doesn't break, that means that you have optimum moisture and the dirt can be optimum compaction. All right, so let's take a look at what we have going on here today. So we have everything backfilled, the exterior of the house. This will be the front, that'll be the front porch. She needs to come up a little bit and all that. I'm standing in the garage and we also have down uh, in the footer. So what we're gonna do today is we have our material over here gravel three-quarter crushed gravel we're gonna put in the footings so what we do is we gravel up to the height of these footings so they're eight inch footings so we put gravel all the way across then the plumber comes and does a ground rough is what it's called so he puts the plumbing in the floor of like the crawl space side of the house so all your plumbing goes underneath the concrete of the floor in your crawl space out of the house. And then in the garage, we're gonna bring it up to grade and we are going to put gravel down and prep it for the concrete slab that'll be inside the garage. So that's what we have going on today. So gravel, there's a lot of different kinds of gravel. Um, for, uh, for me, I like using inch and a half road base uh, for like prep for concrete and stuff like that. An inch and a half road base has fines in it 
Uh, it's a little easier to move around with a machine. It's essentially what's on like a gravel road, so it won't get real muddy or anything like that. It still needs to be compacted, um, but it's inch and a half rock, so there's an inch and a half screen, and then there's fines that are in mixed in with the inch and a half, which actually create a engineered fill is what they call it. So it's a structural fill. So they have three quarter uh, road base, inch and a half road base, and three inch minus road base. So there's three different kind of kinds of uh, inch like road material. So this material right here is three quarter crushed. So there's absolutely no fines in it whatsoever. It's just three quarter crushed rock and the thing with three-quarter crushed rock is it's really easy to rake and stuff like that so it's not so inch and a half like road base would be harder to rake um, if you're in a situation like that where you have to do a lot of raking the other thing with crushed gravel is you use it underneath of pipes so like when you're doing water and sewer work uh, and stuff like that in uh, more like a municipal application, um, you use crushed gravel to bed the pipe because crushed gravel is 100% compact as it sits, where like inch and a half road material, you have to compact and put water in with it. So there's a lot of different applications uh, for when you would use like road material and when you would use crushed material. So if you put like crushed material out on a gravel road it would be like trying to drive over marbles you just couldn't get any traction with a car where if you put like road base underneath that road base will never get muddy it will only uh, the surface of it will only get muddy so that's the reason why you put it on like a, a gravel driveway or a gravel road all right so we're hanging out here in the garage so we got everything backfilled in the garage and this is one thing that dirt guys do that pretty much is concrete prep so uh, and if you can do this in the dirt world you're a stud and if you can do it in uh, the concrete world you're a stud too pretty much your dirt guys just prepping your your garage floor for the concrete guy so here's what we have in where we're at in Billings concrete's usually four inches thick industry standard pretty much concrete needs four inches of bedding material underneath it which is like inch and a half road base or crushed you can use either or apples to apples so what I've done is I go from the top of the wall measure how far down I need to be for my dirt grade for my gravel grade and for my concrete grade so I go all the way around this whole garage and set myself up. So see this bottom line be my dirt grade. This is my gravel grade. So my concrete's going to be four inches higher. So what you do is you can either take one point as soon as you know your elevations, you can take one point, snap a, snap a string line all the way across. But for me, I'm working for, by myself right now, and so I just use a level. So obviously I go down however far I need to be, flip the level sideways, you can see on the top there's a bubble, totally flat, get yourself aligned with a pencil. So now the other thing with these uh, garages too is they'll slope three inches to the door, like two or three inches, whatever, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, some guys go two inches. So it's pretty much when your car is all slushy from the snow, you park it in your garage, the snow melts, it can drain out of your garage. That's pretty much what it's all about. Some guys like it flat, totally a variable. So here's what we have on the front. We're just three inches lower. Here's our dirt grade. Here's our gravel grade. And the concrete's gonna be a little higher. So that's one thing that, uh, uh, your excavation company can do or your concrete guy, either one.
All right, so we have our footings graveled here. This is what it looks like. Simply the gravel is just the same elevation as the footings now. That's what it looks like. See, and this is the walk outside. So typically you'd have all four corners be walls. And so you'd have to gravel after the footers were poured, but before the walls. So normally before they go and form up the walls, you'd have to gravel your footings. But in this case, we were able to get through over here. So we just dump the gravel in with the machine, rake out the highs and lows. That's what it looks like when it's done. And then from here, after the footings are graveled, then the plumber will come in here and put his plumbing in the gravel. All right, so here we are out at the spec build. We finally got her all wrapped up around here. Got everything backfilled. The garage is up to grade, uh, ready for concrete. Uh, our basement's graveled, our basement side's graveled, ready to go for our plumbers to do a ground rough. Um, so we are ready to go. One of the cool things about this lot out here and where the house is placed on the lot is it gives us a huge front yard the road's quite a ways away from the front of the house. So lots of room to plant trees and do some really neat landscaping. Another neat thing about this house is this is the crawl space side of the house and you can tell we have a walkout. So there's no wall going all the way across the back of here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put like a concrete patio um, out at the, the basement side or the crawl space side so you can come out here and kind of enjoy you know being outside but it's also really secluded we have a lot of trees that we were able to keep uh, in here so it ended up being really neat so right behind me here is about gonna be where the back door is off the house and it's you're gonna have a huge kind of flat yard which is really nice you know be able to go outside and Maybe put a batting cage up for the kids. So there's like a little walk around of the whole entire house. Ended up being um, kind of better than expected, I guess, uh, with how the, the lot's placed on the land and just the lay of the land, um, you know, and the grade changes and stuff like that. So pretty happy with how it all turned out. 